In today's video, we're going to discuss the day-night behavior. So this was a really tricky one to come up with a good demonstration for just because, you know, how do you just, how do you demonstrate day and night without letting it play out? And it takes a while, even at max speed, it, it takes a good 10 or, or so minutes to play out. Even just the, the short, you know, sun up to sun down that I uh, displayed there in that sped up video i think i sped that up something like 700 uh, percent so uh, to get down to 90 seconds but um so it was tricky to come up with a good demonstration i hope you liked it and i hope that uh made sense and kind of demonstrated how it works uh, i think if you have questions about it obviously feel free to ask or just experiment on your own and i think you'll get the idea but the most important thing is how do you set up the behavior what are all the uh, the fields, you know, meanings, and we'll go over all that right now. So let's start with the start angle. Uh, the start angle has to do with the position of the sun at the start of the level. So uh, if we imagine that zero is directly above our head, right? Um, then if we look at this image here, we can imagine the world and a circle around the world and zero is right there above our head. And we have a uh, plus 90 degrees going to the right and negative 90 degrees going to the left. So let's just follow it, you know, clockwise. Let's go down, you know, to the right, it's gonna go down, uh, it's gonna go up to 90. It'll go up to 180. That'll be basically the opposite of zero, right? It's gonna be midnight. And then it'll start to tick down into the negative, starting at 179 and circling away to negative 90. And then finally back up to zero and then go back into the positives again and around and around it goes. So that's the way to think of it. And you can see that the start angle, uh, the lowest number we can have is negative 80. Highest number we can have is 180. So that ticks, right? So that's the way you envision the, the start angle and how you can judge where to start your sun. Um, bear in mind, 90 degrees is flat plane, right? So if you wanted your your level to start directly in the morning, maybe you tick that up a little bit, play around with it, but like maybe you tick that up to say, I don't know, 80 or 70. Actually, it'd be negative 80 or negative 70 in, in the morning. Um, but the point is, is that you, you wouldn't want it directly flat because then it might take a while. It'd still be dark for a little while. Maybe you do. I don't know. Just again, it's it's your own taste and your own preference based on the game that you're making. Play around with that a little bit. The time dilation. Now I had in my demonstration. Oops. I had my in my demonstration. I had it uh, ticked up to a thousand, and that was the maximum that I could go. Um, you can dial. You could type in like I had just a moment ago. You could type in five thousand doesn't make a difference. There is no 5,000. The max you can have is 1,000. And without getting too technical, because honestly, I don't think I could if I tried, the point of this is that there is a limitation. 1,000, think of 1,000 as 100% of max speed. Um, so anything higher than that is really just 100%, right? And that's the speed at which the sun is going to move around that imaginary circle surrounding our, our fictional planet. Um, so a thousand, you might think, well, that's pretty fast, but you know, in that scene that I recorded, I had it up to a thousand. I had it starting, I want to say at negative 60 and I don't remember where it, uh, ended up at, but that took a full 10 minutes to play out. And then I had to speed up the clip 700% to make it, you know, digestible for the video. Um, so it is a, a pretty lengthy one. And I think, in order to get the timing just right for your game, you're just going to have to experiment a little bit, maybe do a little bit of stop watching to see, what, you know, how long, you know, a hundred dilation takes and then multiply from there. Um, if you want to do that, you're going to use the diagnostics checkbox. 
Uh, let me show you what that looks like. So you can see uh, on the left hand side the diagnostics that shows up and you can see the start angle moving. You can see the time of day that you have available there at the bottom, the various uh, values that are playing out throughout the course of the cycle. So you could sit there and just watch this if you want. It's going to take a while. There's no way around that. I would probably record it so that you could play it back at a, a faster speed or um, you know, skip ahead if you need to. So now we have these RGB values and I'm going to kind of take these as a chunk, right? So RGB stands for red, green, blue. The colors in a RGB spectrum go from zero to 255. So imagine any color you want, let's say pink, right? Pink is going to be these three values on the screen. And it's a combination of this much red, this much green, this much blue equals pink. And of course there's different shades of pink. So, uh, you know, whatever shade of pink or whatever shade of color you want has a specific value mixture of red, green, and blue that make up that color. And so what we're really talking about is the spectrum between the start and end of your day, right? Uh, what range of colors are you going to see between those two points in time? And so that's, that's really what these numbers are about. You know, experiment with this and see what looks good for you. It kind of depends on the scenario, right? If you're on an alien planet, maybe it doesn't look anything like Earth. So just just depends on what you're going for. But that's uh, what those values mean and how you might use them to make a really dramatic scene. If you want to like a really dramatic sunrise or sunset or something like that, you could maybe play around with the, the spectrum between, say, I don't know, orange and red or something like that. Uh, then you have the intensity values uh, and the exposure values. So these both have to do with light and brightness, just like in a camera. If you've ever played around with a camera exposure to the light that's there, same difference. Um, intensity is just gonna be how intense is that light in your scene. So uh, again, it, it's all up to you what feels right to you. I can't really suggest a, a value because it's not gonna be the same for everyone. The best thing you can do is take some time to tweak this and play around with this and, and get it to your liking. Okay. And then there's last thing we want to look at and that's the trigger event. So this is actually really cool. Um, this allows you to trigger an event at a specific time of day. So perhaps the freaks come out at night, right? So we can set, uh, say, eh, 10 o'clock is, is nighttime where I'm from at 10 o'clock you want to spawn some zombies or something like that. I don't know. So uh, the way that would work is you, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can logic link this to like a trigger zone or something, and that would trigger whatever's attached to the trigger zone. You could also use the developer section and here in the if use spot, you could type in what you're triggering. So if you, if you've watched, say, the clone video that I did just a few days ago, um, we have a object that has that global behavior on it, and we're spawning rab or no, it was it wasn't rabbits, it was gems, rubies, right? Uh, I would basically name the object that has the behavior attached to it here. So let's suppose that rock was called rock one, two, three, and I wanted to spawn the gems at 10 o'clock. Then I would type in rock uh, one, two, three. That's the object that has the behavior called clone. And, the, and then the clone activates and it knows to spawn five gems in this radius of, of wherever it is that it's set up. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have questions about that, by all means, leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. But uh, watch the clone video and you'll see what I mean by that. But it doesn't have to be cloning. It could be anything, right? It could be opening and closing a door. It could be, you know, gosh, any number of things. You, you know, use your imagination. But that's what you can do. You can either logic link to it and, and whatever it's logic linked is going to be activated at that time. Or you can use an if used. You're just referencing an object anywhere in the scene and whatever's attached to that object is going to be activated. 
But that's it. That's the uh, everything you need to know for the day-night behavior. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned anything new, uh, by all means, click the like button below. That really helps me out and it helps uh, promote the channel. If you are new here or if you just haven't subscribed for whatever reason, I would really love to have you stick around. Uh, please be sure to click the subscribe button below and subscribe to the channel. And lastly, if you'd like a notification for whenever I post new videos, bell icon to your friend, just click that and that'll pop up a notification when new, new videos are available. Uh, but that's it. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.